Hey Savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here and today we'll be going through how to install the latest release of Ubuntu Server, which is 20.04 LTS. This is a great and minimal installation which offers a command line interface and keeps the resource usage down to a minimum. What we'll do is first download Ubuntu Server, then I'll explain how to flash it onto a disk, we'll boot that disk, and finally run through how to install it on an empty storage space of your choice. As a bonus, I'll also show you how to install a web server so that you can start developing a website right away and host it locally on your own server. I'm here on the ubuntu.com website where we're going to download Ubuntu Server 20.4. If we just go to the download section and hit the drop down, we can see that the Ubuntu server section offers a 20.04 LTS download and various different architectures. What I'm most interested in is the 2004 button right here, which allows us to download a 64-bit version of Ubuntu server. So if we just click on that, the download will go ahead and launch on its own here after a few moments, as you can see down here in the bottom left. If you're new and stopping by to watch an install today, please take a moment to subscribe below and hit the notification bell for more installs and tutorials. All right, and now that I'm done downloading the ISO, I'm going to launch and use the Belena Etcher app in order to flash the image onto a USB, CD, or DVD. I'm going to go ahead and launch Belena. Belena Etcher is an easy-to-use application available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. I'll go ahead and put a link in the description below if you want to download the application. You can also use any other application that can create a bootable disk, such as UNet Bootin or Rufus. All right, and the first thing we want to do is go ahead and select the image that we just got done downloading. So let's go ahead and click on Select Image, and whatever folder you ended up saving Ubuntu 20.04 into, you can go ahead and select the image. So I have Ubuntu 20.04 live server, the AMD 64-bit version. I'm going to go ahead and select that and hit open. Next, I'm going to select the USB DVD or CD where I want to flash the installer onto. I'm going to go ahead and hit the change button. And since I already have a USB inside my computer, it's going to go ahead and automatically try to select that device but if you have more than one device or drive in your computer, make sure you go ahead and select the proper device where you want to flash the installer onto because it will delete the entire contents in order to flash the installer onto the disk. So since I only have the one, I'm gonna go ahead and make sure I have the check mark and hit continue. After that, I'm gonna go ahead and hit the flash button and give Belen Etcher administrative privileges in order to start flashing. After you flash the disk, you'll take it over to the computer or server where you want to install Ubuntu Server 20.04 LTS on and insert it. Then you'll have to boot into your BIOS in order to change the settings around and select the newly created bootable disk to boot first. This is usually done by finding the correct key in order to boot into your BIOS for your particular computer. It's usually one of the F keys like F2 or F10. Following that, you'll find a tab called the boot order and exchange the order around so that the bootable disk is first to boot. After you have that set up, you will save and exit out of your BIOS and you should see a screen similar to this if you did everything correctly. All right, and if you went ahead and made it this far, please hit the like button, it really does help me out. We have a few options here. We have install Ubuntu server and then install it with the safe graphics option. So if you potentially have a Nvidia graphics card on this computer or server, you might wanna go with the safe graphics option. Otherwise, we're gonna go ahead with the install Ubuntu server option. Let's go ahead and press enter and let it load up. All right, now we're welcomed by the select your language screen. Go ahead and select whatever language you wanna use for the installer. I'm gonna go ahead and use English. And if there's a new installer update, it's gonna go ahead and ask you whether or not you wanna continue without updating the installer or update to the new installer and use it. I'm just gonna go ahead and continue without updating and press enter. Following that, we can select our keyboard layout as well as our variant of that keyboard layout. You can also use the identify keyboard in order to automatically identify what keyboard you are using. But the default English US layout is fine for me. If you want, just press enter and scroll through and find your proper keyboard. Once you're done, use the arrow key to go down to the done button and press enter. In order to install the server version, at least one network interface has to exist in order to talk to other machines as it says above. And by default, it's going to use DHCP in order to go ahead and pull an address from a router. As you can see, it did detect a network adapter called ENP0S3 of type Ethernet. And for me, it went ahead and assigned an IP address here of 192.168.1.113. And this all looks great to me. You can go in here and press enter and then change and edit the IPv4 information if needed. Let's say you don't have a DHCP. You can go ahead and manually put in a subnet address 
gateway, name servers, and anything else that you might need. But since I went ahead and got an IP assigned via my router, I'm gonna go ahead and press done. Following that, you can go ahead and put in a proxy if you have one. It shows you how to go ahead and put that proxy information in if you have a proxy. I don't, so I'm gonna go ahead and go to the next and just hit done. Following that, if you wanna use a different mirror address, you can but the US archive Ubuntu works great for me, so I'm gonna stick with the default and press done. So we have a few options here. We can use the entire disk, meaning everything that's on the selected disk right here will be deleted in order to go ahead and place Ubuntu server onto it. So make sure that you have absolutely no data no platforms or anything else on the storage disk where you want to install Ubuntu server. Otherwise, it will be erased moving on to the next step. So as you can see, I only have the one storage space uh, available to me and I made sure, yes, this is the 32 gig one where I want to install Ubuntu server. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep that one. Make sure you change this according to the one where you want to install Ubuntu server onto if you have multiple storage devices. You can also set up Ubuntu server as an LVM or logical volume management to make your storage space a little bit easier to go ahead and manage. Otherwise, you don't have to. You'll also be able to encrypt the LVM group if you select this option. I'm gonna go ahead and use the default. So I'm gonna do the use an entire disk and I've already specified my disk. I know that there's nothing on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit done. At this point, we're given a summary of changes that are going to be made to the system. Up above, you'll see that the installer is going to create two new partitions on this storage disk, one for the EFI partition formatted as FAT32, and then a root file partition formatted as ext4. That's perfect. And it tells you on what disk it's going to do that, and these all look fine to me. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit done once I've confirmed that those are the changes I want to make. At this point, it's warning you that it's about to start the install process and is going to be partitioning your storage space. So again, as long as you're confident that you have no information on the storage disk that you selected and you wanna go ahead and continue, you can go ahead and select continue and press enter. Following that, we're asked about a username that we wanna use for our server. Savvy Nick uh, works for me. And what do you wanna call your server? I'm gonna call it uh, Savvy Server. So following that is the actual username that we're gonna to use to log in. Above that, your name is just a name the system's gonna use for you. Go ahead and put a password in for that username and then confirm that password a second time. Once you have us all filled in, go ahead and press done. Here we're given the option to go ahead and install the open SSH server package so we can securely access our server remotely. I like to go ahead and install OpenSSH server at this point. I usually install it after the fact anyway, so might as well do it now. You can import an SSH key if you want to. I'm not going to do this. Instead, I'm gonna go down and select done. On this page, we can go ahead and install any other extra server packages that we want or may need. And you can read a little bit about them on the far right hand side where it tells you a description. So uh, some people like to go ahead and get the Microsoft PowerShell installed. All you have to do is go down and press space, which will select whether or not you want to install that package. I don't really need PowerShell, but some things that are nice are like the Postgres SQL database or the Amazon Web Services command line interface, or perhaps Docker if you want that. But I'll let you choose whatever you want. We don't need any of these in order to create our web server, so I'm just gonna go ahead and hit done. At this point, Ubuntu server is now being installed, and this will take a few moments in order to finish up. All right, and once things are finished installing, you'll get the reboot button. And while rebooting, you'll want to make sure to go ahead and remove any installation media that you may have inside your computer so you don't boot back into the live image or installer of Ubuntu server. If you end up accidentally booting back in, just power down the computer, remove the USB CD or DVD, and try starting it back up in order to get to your newly installed system. So at this point, I'm gonna hit reboot, and we're given a little prompt here that it's okay to go ahead and remove our installation media. So go ahead and do it at this point and press enter. All right, and if you made it to this screen, you can press enter a few times. Sometimes you won't see the login until you press enter because console logs get in the way. So if you're not seeing anything besides console logs, press enter a couple times, just make sure that you're that the system's not waiting for you to log in. All right, and at this point, we'll go ahead and put in that username that we created. So I created Savvy Nick. Put in the password that you created as well. And if you can log in and you see this screen, you've officially installed Ubuntu Server 20.04 LTS. Congratulations and welcome to your newly installed server. Also, welcome to the command line interface. So while we're in here, 
let's go ahead and install that web server really quick and make sure that we can reach it on the local network. The one thing I like doing right away is doing IP space A, and that just gives me the IP address of my local network for this particular computer. I have 192.168.1.113, and I'll make note of that. Following that, I need to go ahead and install a web server, so I'm gonna use Apache 2. So if I do sudo apt install, and then just Apache 2, that should find me the correct package. I'm gonna go ahead and put my password in for administrative privileges. And it's asking me, do I wanna install Apache 2? Yes, I do. Give it a few moments here to finish up. And once we're back to our prompt here, let's go ahead and see if a new folder exists. So it should be cd var www html. And inside this folder, we should find an index. And we sure do. I'm going to open up that index.html with nano. So I'll do nano index.html. I wanna put sudo in front of this in order to open it up when an administrative user. And in here, you can see that there's plenty of stuff that comes standard with Apache. I'm actually gonna go ahead and keep this. But the one thing I'll change is the background color so we can see that I'm making live changes. I'm just gonna do six Fs in here, and then let's go ahead and try accessing our server from another computer locally on the network. So I'm gonna do control X and save the modified buffer by hitting Y and pressing enter to overwrite the file. All right, so what I did here is go to the IP address that I said I needed to remember. So the 192.168.1.113 for me, whatever IP space A gave you, you can go ahead and use. And here is the Apache 2 Ubuntu default web page that's available to me. This is the default web page. We can change up that index.html page in order to serve whatever we want, but we've officially now installed our web server as well. As you can see, it's working. This default page also gives you a little bit more information about how you can go ahead and configure your Apache 2 web server installation. So make sure to go ahead and read through this, but congratulations on your web server install at this point. You have successfully installed it. And if you'd like to open this up to the public, you can through your router's firewall settings. You can always allow port 80 to be forwarded to the server that you just installed Apache onto. Now, of course, I wouldn't suggest doing this, but you can research if you like to. What I normally do with this Ubuntu server is go ahead and use it locally as a web server to test developing web pages and using it on my local network. Well, I hope you enjoyed this installation tutorial of Ubuntu Server 20.04 LTS. And if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please post them in the comments section below. Also make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Thanks for watching.